go for me and I'm taboo But if you're hard to get a go for you And if I do, then you are through Boy, my baby, that's the end of you Every so often there emerges a star Someone who just has that thing That thing you can't quite describe with words But you know it when you see it Someone who not only shines, but dazzles. Someone that stands out from the rest and someone whose presence is just so electrifying, but yet endearing. That someone is no other than the late, great Dorothy Dandridge. Today we are going to discuss Dorothy Dandridge and why she was so popular, but yet still underrated and why she deserves all of her flowers in every single petal. Let's get into it. So who is Dorothy Jean Dandridge, sometimes referred to as Dottie? Well, surprisingly enough, although she was a popular and sought after actress, mainly during the 1940s and 50s, a lot of people still don't know who she is. Dorothy was one of the first to break down many barriers in Hollywood for the African American community. She broke stereotypes and overcame many adversities and paved the way for many African American actresses. But yet it still seems that even to this day, she still hasn't gotten the proper respect, honor, and credit that she deserves for all that she contributed and endured. So before we get into the reasons why Dorothy Dandridge deserves her flowers, let me tell you a little bit about who she was. Dorothy Dandridge was born in Cleveland, Ohio in 1922 to Ruby and Cyril Dandridge. Her father was a cabinet maker and a Baptist minister and separated from the family right before Dorothy's birth. And her mother was an entertainer. Dorothy also had an older sister named Vivian Dandridge. Now, due to her mother being an actress, singer, and nightclub entertainer, she was no stranger to show business and created a dance act for her daughters and named the duo the Wonder Children, managed and trained by her then lover Geneva Williams. Now it was said that Geneva was very, very abusive and very harsh to the girls and brutally punished them when they didn't meet her expectations. It was also stated that she made them practice excessively, sometimes until they collapsed. Dorothy and her sister toured for about five years, but after the Great Depression, bookings for entertainers were very hard to attain, so Ruby moved her family to Hollywood, California, where she knew they can most likely get work. The group eventually gained a third member by the name of Etta Jones and was renamed the Dandridge Sisters. Now, from there, the Dandridge Sisters continued to tour and booked several high-profile nightclubs, such as the Apollo Theater and the Cotton Club. Two of the biggest clubs where Black entertainers performed. So, during this era, if your act made it into one of these clubs, it was a very big deal. And for African Americans during this time, you can only attend these types of clubs if you were an entertainer or a performer. While still touring with her group, Dorothy landed small roles in films such as A Day at the Races with the Marx Brothers, Lady from Louisiana, and Sundown. She would then go on to appear in the 20th Century Fox film, the 1941 musical Sun Valley Serenade, where she performed the Chattanooga Choo Choo with the Nicholas Brothers, another popular act during this time. Now, Dorothy had already been acquainted with the Nicholas Brothers from a prior engagement at the Cotton Club, where she caught the eye of Harold Nicholas, who she went on to date and eventually marry. Dorothy eventually became a solo act and her popularity continued to grow as she took small roles and performed in nightclubs. She also appeared in several soundies. Now, soundies were film clips displayed on jukeboxes, they were like short musical films that lasted around three minutes where you would watch a short performance. Kind of reminds me of today's music videos or short form videos. Her resume as an actress and stage performer continued to grow as she performed in films such as Hit Parade in 1943, Atlantic City, and Pillow to Post. 
She then went on to take a role in the film Tarzan's Peril in which the provocative clothing worn by her character, Melmindy, Queen of Ashuba, created such a buzz it landed her a feature cover in Ebony Magazine in April 1951 and a supporting role in the film The Harlem Globetrotters. Such success led to many other opportunities such as a starring role in the film Bright Road opposite of Harry Belafonte. So at this point, Dorothy was in high demand with even more club bookings all over the world from New York to Café de Paris in London. She was also now booking various variety shows such as Ed Sullivan's Toast of the Town. Dorothy began to garner more and more attention which led to her, probably her biggest film opportunity, the lead in an all-black musical film adaptation of Oscar Hammerstein II's 1943 Broadway musical, Carmen where Dorothy portrays a free-spirited Carmen Jones who sets her sights on a young army officer named Joe, played by Harry Belafonte, who is quickly smitten by her charm, causing him to forsake his love, Cindy Lou, and enter into a disastrous love story. The success of the film landed Dorothy in an Academy Award nomination, making her the first black actress to be nominated for an Oscar in a leading role in March 30th, 1955. Now, Hattie McDaniel did win an Oscar for the role of Mammy in Gone with the Wind in 1939 for Best Supporting Actress, but prior to Dandridge, no black actress had ever won or been nominated for an Academy Award for a leading actress. It wasn't until 2002 that Halle Berry became the first black actress to actually win the Academy Award for Best Actress for the movie Monsters Ball. In her emotional speech, Halle Berry dedicated her award to Dorothy Dandridge. Dorothy's performance in Carmen Jones signified her as one of Hollywood's first African American sex symbols. This led to Dorothy signing a three movie deal with 20th Century Fox starting at $75,000 a film. This was the golden highlight of Dorothy's career and it seemed that she was on the up and up and unstoppable. But unfortunately, her career took a downward spin. After controversies, two unsuccessful marriages and a rumored affair and a three year hiatus, Dorothy's career had begun to fade. Even after starring in the hit film Island in the Sun, her career could not seem to regain its footing, which led to depression and financial woes. On September 8, 1965, Dorothy Dandridge lost her life. A former sister-in-law named Geraldine Branton stated that she had spoken with Dandridge earlier that day and stated that she expressed hopelessness for the future and saying, Barbara Streisand's song, People, in its entirety. Dandridge's last words to Branton were, Whatever happens, I know you will understand. Hours later, she was found unresponsive in her apartment. It was stated that her cause of death was due to an accidental overdose or a possible intentional one. It was later reported that she passed away from a fat embolism from a fracture in her right foot. To this day, there are many conspiracies surrounding her death. It was also stated that she died with $2.14 in her bank account. She was 42 years old. So now let's get into the reasons why Dorothy Dandridge deserves her flowers. Number one, she was a triple threat. Dorothy could sing, dance, and act, and she could do all three very well. Dorothy came from a musical family and had been training and performing since she was a very small child. She was multi-talented and that takes not only natural ability, but skill and precision. They say practice makes perfect, but it also makes permanent. How you practice in here is how you will perform out there. And also for her to maintain being in a group and still taking solo film gigs and then to eventually branch out on her own and make a name for herself shows her motivation, her drive, and her professionalism, and also her work ethic. 
especially in a business as competitive and challenging as show business. Number two, first of many. Dorothy was one of the first black sex symbols and black actresses to play non-stereotypical roles. The first to be nominated for an Academy Award as a black actress in the leading actress category. First black woman on the cover of Life magazine. First black performer to open at the Empire Room at New York's Waldorf Astoria Hotel, which led to the bookings of other black entertainers such as Lena Horne, Pearl Bailey, Count Basie Orchestra with the vocalist Joe Williams. Number three, she kicked down doors and broke racial barriers. Dorothy refused to play stereotypical roles such as the mammy, the maid, and characters that were subservient to white counterparts. It was very important to her to set that boundary for herself so that she could have the kind of career that she wanted and had worked so hard for. It was very important for her to not participate in roles of films that demean black people. Now in her latter years, when her career started to dwindle, she did star in the film Porgy and Bess and received backlash from the black community due to the film's negative and degrading stereotypes of black people. Now this was during a time where Dorothy hadn't done a major film in about five years and she was having a lot of financial problems and she was just trying to support herself. It was also stated that behind the scenes and the environment of the set of this film was very horrible and the film also received mixed reviews. Now on one hand, I do understand the backlash that Dorothy received, but on the other hand, I also understand that she was having financial issues and by this time she was a mother, a single mother of a disabled child and she was just trying to make a living and support herself and her child that needed 24 hour care. Sometimes when you are one of the first in your race to do something grand or impactful or you are the face representing your race, you can bear the pressure of making sure that you represent your people properly and make them proud, but also at the same time trying to fulfill your own dreams and goals. A lot of times people forget that celebrities are real people. They have real feelings and they have real lives. I don't think Dorothy Dandridge taking this role took away from her initial stance of not playing stereotypical roles. I think she was an actress that was fighting for her career, trying to revive her career, trying to survive financially, and I think she, as a mother, was doing what she felt she had to do. Number four, she starred in the iconic Carmen Jones and is possibly the best siren of all time. Now, when you think of Dorothy Dandridge, Carmen Jones should come to your mind immediately. This is the role that she was mostly known for. Carmen Jones is one of the first black musicals with an all black ensemble cast with a big budget. This was rarely seen and done of this caliber. So this was a big deal and there was a worldwide search for the lead character, Carmen. And every black actress during this time, well known or not, auditioned for the lead role, such as Eartha Kitt and Diane Carroll, who ended up getting a part in the film. The film also had many other great actors and actresses such as Harry Belafonte, Pearl Bailey, Olga James, and Joe Adams. Before Dorothy auditioned for this role, she had just come off of the film Bright Road in which she had played a teacher. So when she first auditioned, she was told that she was too model-esque and not sultry and sexy enough. Dorothy then returned with hair and makeup and clothing to reflect as such and landed the part. Dorothy was magic on screen, with the dazzling eyes and a fiery demeanor. Dorothy portrayed, if not the best, one of the best sirens of all time. Her authoritative presence and beauty was captured so well, she not only had Harry Belafonte's character eating out of her hand, but the audience as well. When she played Carmen, we not only saw her take her power as a black woman, we also saw her take power over a man. It was probably the first time that I had ever seen a woman in film have control like that. 
And if you want to bring it to modern day, when I got older and I watched a movie called Boomerang, starring Eddie Murphy and Robin Gibbons, the character that Robin Gibbons plays in Boomerang is very similar to the character that Dorothy Dandridge played as Carmen. And I don't think that these modern day siren type of characters would have existed if it had not been for Dorothy Dandridge. Many people and actresses in Hollywood still pay homage to Dorothy Dandridge. Halle Berry produced and starred in the film introducing Dorothy Dandridge in 1999, a biographical film about Dorothy Dandridge's life. A lot of celebrity actresses wanted to tell Dorothy's stories, such as Whitney Houston and Janet Jackson. Eventually, Halle Berry ended up funding the film and starring in it. And as you know, Halle is a great actress and looks a lot like Dorothy Dandridge. They were even born in the same hospital in Cleveland, Ohio. So the film is amazing and I'm sure Dorothy would be proud. And Halle also won a Golden Globe for the film. Number five, beauty and confidence. I don't really have to say much here. Her beauty speaks for itself. She is stunning. Her skin was referred to as honey and cafe au lait. There is no doubt that Dorothy is one of the most classically beautiful women of her time and now. Her signature look and hair is still very popular and often referenced. Her beauty is elegant, sexy but not overt, and confident, which makes people gravitate towards her. Number six, the comparison to Marilyn Monroe. Now the constant comparison to Marilyn Monroe, I think at times overshadowed her. Now I can understand why the two are so heavily compared. They both are extremely beautiful. They both are sex symbols. They both dealt with a lot of trauma as it pertained to men and their upbringing. Um, they have very similar brands and essences and they both reportedly died in a very similar way and still have a lot of mystery and conspiracy surrounding their death. And even down to little things like their signature beauty marks on their face, there are double initials, for example, MM for Marilyn Monroe and DD for Dorothy Dandridge. Now, although they are oddly similar and I understand the comparison, I do not refer to Dorothy Dandridge as the black Marilyn Monroe. And that's out of respect to not diminish Dorothy's contributions. Dorothy was a force and a talent all on her own and worked very hard for her name and her status. But due to racism that caused many disadvantages, I don't believe Dorothy was able to reach her full potential or enough of her potential, I should say. There is only one Marilyn Monroe and there is only one Dorothy Dandridge. Also, what a lot of people might not know is that Dorothy and Marilyn were very good friends and they trained together, which I'm not shocked because they did have a lot to relate to. Their lives were really parallel to each other's in many ways. I think for Dorothy to be one of the only black women in her field and in her brand at that time, I think that that was challenging enough and then to add the layers of comparison to Marilyn on top of that made it even more difficult. But I love the fact that they were friends and that they could understand each other. Here is a quote given by Dorothy's former sister-in-law, Jerry Nicholas Branton, as it pertained to Dorothy's and Marilyn's friendship. She says, oh, they were friends all right. They spent all day at the lab. They had exercise class there. And sometimes Marilyn forgot to bring her leotards and Dottie would lend her hers. Marilyn wasn't as neat as Dottie. Dottie was a perfectionist, and if somebody used something like that, she was through with it. Number seven, adversities. Dorothy Dandridge married Harold Nicholas in 1942, and it was stated that the marriage fell apart due to infidelity and his philandering ways and his lingering absence due to his touring schedule. They also had a daughter named Harolyn Suzanne Nicholas, who suffered from brain damage due to a lack of oxygen due to a delay in delivery. It was stated that Dorothy blamed herself for her daughter's delay in delivery due to trying to hold out for Harry, who never showed up for the delivery. Dorothy also had to go to therapy for this. In the end, their daughter ended up being disabled and needed 
24-hour care that Dorothy was eventually not able to pay for. Dorothy and Harry's divorce finalized in 1951. It was also rumored that Dorothy had an affair with the Carmen Jones director, Otto Preminger, for four years and became pregnant with his child in 1955, but was forced to have an abortion. It was stated that the affair ended due to him not leaving his wife. And then Dorothy also married for a second time to Jack Dennison in 1959, but divorced in 1962 due to domestic violence. Dorothy dealt with a lot of racism as well. While working in Las Vegas at a hotel lounge, the hotel had the pool drained after she stuck her toe in it. It was also stated that she was forbidden to speak with any of the audience. She was forbidden to use the hotel lobby, bathrooms, and was given a very small and inadequate dressing room. Now, can you imagine being a celebrity or an entertainer that has been invited to perform at a venue that will not even allow you to use the restroom? That had to be very mentally crushing and conflicting all in one. Now, Dorothy was also heavily criticized by the press for dating white men and also when she starred in movies with a white love interest such as Island in the Sun, she and the cast had to adhere to production code requirements as it pertained to interracial love on screen. Now this bothered Dorothy because she definitely wanted to be natural and organic in her scenes. I think during this time if you were portraying an interracial couple on screen or in film, you could do no more than a simple kiss or a simple embrace and these kind of restraints definitely led to tension on set. And adding to her controversy, Dorothy ended up suing a magazine company called Confidential for libel after they published a slew of scandalous and false stories about her in the tabloids. The magazine company was eventually ordered to stop publishing questionable stories. And last but not least, number eight, representation. Representation matters. For those of you who have seen some of my other videos, you know I grew up watching old Hollywood classic movies with my mother. And I remember every time Carmen Jones would come on the television, she would make this huge announcement and it was a big deal because the only time that we would see it back then is when it would come on television. And I remember always racing to the television. I was so excited to see her on screen and I remember the first time I saw her in Carmen Jones, I was taken aback by her beauty and her presence. Here was this fierce, beautiful black woman with so much energy bursting through the screen with so much authority and confidence. It was probably, now that I'm thinking about it, the first time that I saw a black woman not playing the slave or the mammy or maid stereotype. She was sultry and unapologetic and I don't think we really had seen that in such a grand way before Dorothy Dandridge and Carmen Jones. When I saw Dorothy, I finally saw me as someone who could be confident and capable with beauty and grace. It was magical seeing that on screen and because I got to see that at such a young age, it really helped shape my self-esteem as I grew into a woman. And that is why representation is so powerful. And even to this day, when Carmen Jones comes on television, my mother still calls me and we still watch it together. In conclusion, Dorothy left a beautiful legacy and a trail of opened doors and opportunities. She was one of a kind and the word that I think describes her most when she comes to mind is courage. She set a standard and broke barriers and she did this while facing trauma, rejection, fighting for her rights, and all while not having the right love and support surrounding her. She was definitely the epitome of strength and bravery, which is why she gives off such a fiery essence of determination in a lot of her roles. She was powerful and magnetic and always had a twinkle in her eyes. She was pure magic on and off screen. She was a loving mother who loved to cook and just wanted to pursue her passion and dreams. She fought hard and gave it what she had. Now some might say that she didn't reach her full potential, and maybe she didn't. 
but what she did do is leave her footprints and her blueprint for those that come behind her so that we could add to and finish what she couldn't. She left her presence, which simply reminds us that we are bold, fierce, and worthy, and that is why the one and only Dorothy Dandridge deserves her flowers.